Hey guys, I learned something really cool today. So I'm gonna concentrate really hard and just watch. <laughs> no, 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 don't zoom out. It's, uh, okay, so it's just color grading, but how to do it. Hey guys, Nathan here. And goofy tricks aside, being able to change the color of a particular object is actually something that's super useful. I can't count the amount of times I shot an interview with a client and they're like, oh man, I really wish I wore a green shirt instead of a red shirt. And I'm like, well, you should have wore a green shirt. And then I eventually end up fixing it and then they want me to fix something else. So anyway, I find it super useful. And today I'm gonna show you a couple ways of how I go about doing that, but first, be sure to hit that like button and get subscribed for lots more videos like this. Anyway, let's get into it. We're gonna pop into DaVinci Resolve and this trick can totally be done in the free version. So let me show you the fastest way of doing it. We just have everything graded here. We just have the shot of these flowers, these red roses. Basic grade going on. I'm not gonna bother getting into explaining it because we wanna get to how to change the color of these flowers. Now, the quickest and dirtiest way of doing it, I'm gonna hit Alt S on my keyboard, open a new node and we're just gonna go into our hue versus hue. I'm then gonna select red here, and then let's just bring that sucker up to make these purple. Boom, easy peasy. Purple, not purple. I'm pressing control D to switch between. Now you may be thinking that you can select on the actual roses themselves, and let's just reset here. You can definitely do that. So we're gonna select on the roses, but what I like, you see that? So we're getting some areas where it's not quite selecting all the red. I find with something that's general like that, you're fine to just actually select the color from down here and it'll just select nice and wide, but you can always widen it out if you wanna capture a little bit more there. Now this method works, but just switching between, you may notice that it's turning everything with a bit of red in it purple. And that's not exactly what we're looking for. So we wanna be able to have finer control and Here's a way we can do that. So I'm gonna reset this node. We're then gonna go into our color picker. I'm gonna pick that red. And then we're just gonna finesse it a little bit. So just give me a second here. I'm gonna widen this up. Okay. Perfect. That's looking good. I always run it through the shot. Cause see, this area here, totally would have got me. What is it? There we go. I'm gonna just denoise it a little bit. And boom. Okay, so that's kind of what we're looking for. Now, there's a couple ways that we can go about this. We could go into our offset and adjust the color, but the problem with that is it's literally just increasing the brightness of the red that is already there. So if you notice, if we throw in more red, it just makes it extra red. But if we show in, throw in like down here, it just makes it kind of darker which is not really the blue that we're looking for, right? I'm pushing it towards the blue direction and it's just making it dark. So it's combining with the red, which is not exactly what we want. Now, another way we could do it is we could come over to our hue adjustment. We come over here and boom, that is super blue. So now the benefit of this method, it lets us check what's actually being impacted. And if we notice here, we're getting a bit of this shadow, what's ever in behind here. So we can see a little bit of blue so we just have to finesse that a little bit better, take down our lower saturation areas. And now we have finer control over the color change, which is great, um, but we can also change the color in another method. Now for this method, we are gonna go in and use OFX, so you do need the studio version, I believe. We're gonna go in and we're gonna grab the color compressor. Now, what we can do with this is pretty cool. We're gonna select a target color. So I'm actually just gonna go in here well, let's go with like kind of a greeny color. Yeah. So nothing happens. What we have to do is we have to compress the hue and color compressor is kind of what it sounds like. So, okay, now everything's fairly green. Now we can compress the saturation, bringing everything closer together. And it can get weird if you compress the luminance. <laughs> so you may want to stay away from that, but this is another way that you have a lot of fine control over exactly what color you want to get and how you want to kind of get there. And then you have also have control of the blend of how much you want it blended in, which you can always do in your key tab by just decreasing the output for the other methods. So it's not something that's totally limited towards the free version. You just have a couple options and different ways that you can play with it. But that's not it. 
What if you don't want all the flowers the same color? What if you want one blue one, one green one, and one red one? Whatever it is, let me show you how you do that. So I've reset my node grid, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press Alt-L and create a layer node. That means this one is on top of this one and it outputs through here. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go in and we're going to select around one of the flowers. So I'll show you what I'll do here. Let's go into about... So as a note, I have shortened the clip a bit just so these sections here don't under overlap because I want to change these two flowers and this one flower to two separate colors. And I'll show you why that's important in a second that they don't overlap. You can do it. It just makes life a little bit harder. So check this out. We're going to go in and we're going to, let's say we draw a mask around this first set of flowers. Perfect, we're gonna go in and track that. If you haven't done that, go into our tracker and literally just hit the arrow and let's see how it does. Okay, it's done a pretty good job, but not amazing. So we're gonna just widen this a little bit because I think I can get away with it. I'm gonna come a little away from there because I think I gave myself some room at the beginning. Ooh, I didn't. Okay, so the track isn't perfect, but we can always adjust it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come into frame and we're going to mount of the way through and we have a bit of a gap here. So when I'm in the frame adjustments, I can literally adjust things by frame. So I'm just going to move this over a little bit and that shouldn't cause me any troubles. And then we finish out the clip and I'm going to move just a little bit more just to get away from that flower there. There we go. Now the two don't touch. Now I'm going to go in right now and do the same to the other one. If you want, you can make them pretty, but I do like to give myself a little bit of wiggle room on the outside in case I have to move it at the end there. So we're going to come back into our tracker. And we're just going to track back to the beginning and see how this does. Beautiful. Notice a little bit of overlap there. Just going to check that that covers it all the way through. Perfect. Now we're just going to do what we did in the other methods. We're just going to qualify each one here. So check this out. Perfect. So now they're both isolated. Now what we can do is let's go into this first group of flowers and let's adjust them kind of blue. Now this other flower, let's go kind of green and boom. We now have blue flowers, green flowers, and red flowers all in the same shot. And it's just that easy. Anyway, if you like this video, be sure to hit that button and get subscribed for lots more videos like this. Also, that's not green, that's blue. <laughs> have yourself a good one. Okay, bye.